Hey everybody, this is D Hunter for another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarland DC Multiverse Detective Comics number 241, Bullseye Batman. This is a Platinum Chase variant. I picked this up at the local Walmart store, been hunting and hunting and hunting for the new assortment of Batman figures, and finally found a store with a couple of cases. This is an old, cheesy Batman, and I love it. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see the top, 22 moon parts, McFarland Toys, ages 12 plus, DC Multiverse, Bullseye Batman. This is a McFarland Platinum Edition, meaning it's more rare than a regular figure. Here he is in the package, we have a total of four hands, a batarang, display stand, and collector's card. One side of the package, Bullseye Batman from Detective Comics number 241. Other side, Bullseye Batman. At the bottom, there's the barcode, in case that helps anybody. And on the back side, here's Batman putting on that bullseye suit with old school Dick Grayson Robin. Like I said, I've been hunting for these guys at Walmart for several days now, and I finally found a store with a couple cases. The case assortment I found was two Dick Grayson Batman, one Fusion Batman, one Platinum Fusion Batman, one Platinum Bullseye Batman, and one Platinum Hugo Strange. Still looking for the other case that has Lucius Fox, Ben Affleck, Adam West, that sort of stuff. So with no further ado, let's open him up. And of course, I did get two of these Batman figures, one of which to open and enjoy, the other one to keep unopened in my complete Batman-related unopened action figure collection. Before we look at the figure, here's a look at the actual original version of Detective Comics number 241 from 1957, almost 70 years ago. And it is the epitome of the ridiculous 50s DC and Batman comics. As you see the top, the number is actually ripped off. 241, wrote that on the outside of the plastic cover, Detective Comics, featuring the Rainbow Batman. But Batman, last night you wore the green costume, and tonight you're wearing the red. Why? I must, Robin. I must wear a different color costume each night. It's a ridiculous story. Not only does he have all these different colored costumes, he has a rainbow costume and the bullseye costume, and as I understand it, the whole reason is because Robin hurt his arm, and he's trying to distract the enemies and villains to focus on Batman and not realize Robin has a broken arm. Like I said, the epitome of the ridiculous 50s Batman comics. Alright, now that this figure out of the package, here he is with all the accessories laid out. He doesn't come with much. We have a display stand, collector's card, a total of four hands, and no traditional accessories. But the charm of this figure is the ridiculous bullseye outfit. The Batman figure is done in a white costume with a black bullseye, black trunks, a little bit of black on the cowl. It's a very clean looking figure. It has a cloth soft goods cape with a wire in it. So let's take a look. Very campy, but done on sort of a more, I don't know, modern McFarland body. This is the Nightfall body once again. And I really do like the Nightfall body, so I'm happy they're sort of using that as their gold standard. The cowl looks good, semi-long ears. The white cowl looks kind of ridiculous, black on the face, but you can see the white eyebrows, big giant white schnoz or nose there, and then white eyes. As we go further down, we have the big bullseye on his chest. I know in, I think it's Dark Knight Returns, they mention how the Batman symbol is supposed to be the most armored part of him because that's where villains will typically fire and aim, and you can see sort of a similar thing going on here. Black trunks, capsule utility belt, double jointed elbows, double jointed knees, and we have the bullseye on the back of the cape. The cape is pretty nice. It's a fabric cape with a wire on both sides. They're doing a lot of that lately, and I like it a lot. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. It is ridiculous, but that's sort of the charm of this guy. Old school, silver age. I'm really happy to add this to the collection. For a guy like me that owns the original comic, it is perfect and right up my alley. And here he is, broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removable parts detached. Now let's check out his accessories, starting off with the boring stuff. Here's his display stand, typical McFarland display stand we've seen countless times before. It's very thin, very basic. Here's his collector's card. As you can see, it's an image of Batman wearing that bullseye suit from Detective Comics number 241. Bullseye Batman, Detective Comics, 241. Ridiculous distraction while Robin has a broken arm. How about just leave Robin in the Batcave? On the back side, there is a description. If you want to read that, pause now. Now let's look at his hands. He has a total of four of them. 
two left hands, and two right hands. Here he is with his first pair of hands. These are his fists. And here's his second pair of hands. This is a pair of gripping hands. Now I want to check out the differences and reuse between this Bullseye Batman and the Nightfall Batman. So let's take a look. Starting with the head here. You know what? I think it is the exact same head sculpt, just painted different. As we go further down, the torso is the same. You can see the same wrinkle right here on both the figures. But of course, the bat symbol, which is risen on here, has been removed. The arms, they also look to be the same. The diaper area and the belt, also the same. And the legs, the same. Of course, the cape is different. This guy has the cloth cape. This guy has the rubber plastic cape. So they're 100% the same figure besides the cape and the paint job. And here are all the different McFarland DC Multiverse figures that utilize the Nightfall Batman body. We have a total of 10 figures so far, most of which are Batman. We also have the Clock King and Catman. Once I get the Platinum version of Dick Grayson and the Platinum version of Clock King, there will be 12 figures utilizing this body. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, standing about 7.1 inches tall, which can translate to just over 18 centimeters. And if you go to the top of the ears, 7.3, maybe 7.4 inches tall. And now for his articulation. Starting with his head, of course, it can rotate side to side. He can look up and down a pretty good amount. Can tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders, a ball joint, goes up about 90 degrees. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He's got this butterfly ring between his shoulder and chest, increasing the range of motion and covering large gap that would be there. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows. His wrist can rotate and it's going to be hinged as well. Although, there we go. Torso, he's got a ball joint. Rotate around, forward and back. Totally breaks up the bullseye if you're using it that way. Another one is waist. Rotate around, forward and back. Legs completely does splits. McFarland style hip joints. Rotation is decent. Then you go forward about that far. Back not much. Double jointed knees. And then his ankle. Forward and back. Rotate. Tilt. Rock. And of course, toe articulation. Here's a look at Batman in his bullseye costume. He's in the Batcave. Robin asks him, But Batman, last night you wore the green costume, and tonight you're wearing the bullseye costume. Why? I must, Robin. I must wear a different colored Batman costume each night. Sort of my own version of a replica of the cover of Detective Comics number 241. Now let's check them out. Next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other corny 50s Silver Age DC figures. Here he is next to the Rainbow Batman. This is a Mattel DC Multiverse figure, and that costume was also featured in Detective Comics number 241. And here he is next to the DC Direct Rainbow Batman six pack. These are all a bunch of different colorful suits that were featured in Detective Comics 241. Then, next to the Mattel DC Multiverse, Zebra Batman, Negative Batman, and Rip Van Batman. All a bunch of ridiculous Batman variants that fit in nicely with this Bullseye Batman. I believe these are all from the 50s. And now, next to McFarlane's Dick Grayson Robin. This is a pretty good representation of the classic Dick Grayson Robin from the 1940s, 50s, 60s, etc. Now let's check them out. Next to some other McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here are all the figures that utilize the Batman Nightfall body. Ten so far. And since this Cyborg Superman is a Platinum Chase variant, I wanted to take a look at all the different McFarland DC Multiverse Platinum Chase variants out there. Here are all the sort of older Platinum Chase variants. Gold, bronze, unpainted, and then some newer versions. And here's a look at some more recently released McFarland Platinum figures. I'm not fully caught up, but I'm close. Here he is, next to the rest of his wave. These are Platinum Chase variants. We have Hugo Strange's Batman, Bullseye Batman, Ben Affleck Batman from The Flash, and Batman Begins, Lucius Fox. Here's Bullseye Batman, next to his recent Batman wave. We have the Adam West Batman, Dick Grayson Batman, and the world's finest Fusion Batman Superman, both the regular and Platinum Chase variants. And here he is, next to the McFarlane Collector's Edition Wave 6. Clock King, Red Hood, Ragman, and Agent Liberty. Each of these figures has a Platinum Chase variant out there. 
I'm on the hunt for two Clock King, two Red Hood, two Ragman, and one Agent Liberty. If anyone has a lead on where I'm able to get one for a reasonable price, or can help me out, please drop me a line in the comments below. It is much appreciated. Then, with the Walmart exclusive, Max Mercury, and now, next to the DC Classics, Dark Side Mega Figure, here's Batman. Next to the Senio Comic Con exclusive, Superman Centennial Park Tribute Statue, and here he is, next to the previous Putnam Wave. We have Sportsmaster, Manhunter, and the New 52 Reverse Flash. Then, next to the DC Rebirth, Tim Drake Robin, and both the Platinum and regular versions of the Cyborg Superman. And now, with the second digital wave, Green Arrow, Superman, and the Atom. And finally, next to the fifth wave of Collector's Edition figures, both the regular and Platinum Chase variants of Sergeant Rock, Mongo Batman, and Connor Kent Superboy. Now let's check them out. Next to some action figures from different various companies, so we can see how he fits in, both scale and style-wise, in case you want to know which lines you can mix him with. Since he's a McFarlane toy, there's a typically the 7-inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect, and work way smaller, and I'm going to include as many Batman figures as I can during these comparisons. Here he is, next to some of his McFarlane toys brothers. These are five different action figure lines, all from McFarlane toys, all 7-inch scale, and now, with some Jack specific wrestling figures and some Diamond Select toys. Here's Batman next to a roll of Scotch tape, and here he is with some DC Direct and NECA Batman figures. Then, with both some Mattel and Jazzwares wrestling figures, and now with some Mezco and Mattel Batman figures. Next, with some Mafex and Hasbro Marvel Legends, and finally, with some SH figure arts and some Jazzwares Fortnite figures. So, overall, I really like this Bullseye Batman figure. It's cheesy. It's corny, it's campy, like the 50s Batman comics. I think he looks good, looks very clean. The only things I would probably change about this guy, he should have sort of a campier, smiling face that would fit the era of comics he's from. But as a whole, it's a really fun figure. It is right up my alley, as I love the obscure, comic accurate type stuff. And I actually own the original comic. His accessories, non-existent, I'm not really sure what he should come with. The sculpt and paint job, excellent. He's a lot of fun, looks pretty cool. His articulation is everything you would expect from a modern McFarlane DC Multiverse figure. If I were to rate this guy, I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. For a second I'm thinking I'm overshooting the rating, for a next second I think I'm undershooting it. I like the figure, I won't use him a lot because it's a really weird looking Batman costume. But I like it. I like it a lot, and it's comic accurate. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.